Hi, it's Mary Allen with IT in Canada speaking with Peter Williams, who's the CTO of IBM's Big Green Innovations business. I'm here in Montreal at WCIT 2012, and so is Dr. Williams. Thanks for taking the time to speak sure. with me this afternoon. Dr. Williams, could you tell me what the key focus areas are for IBM's Smarter Cities program? What kind of problems are you trying to solve? We're trying to uh, solve the problems of uh, making cities uh, easier to live in, making them more efficient, uh, making them in many respects more sustainable. Uh, for example, by improving their uh, transportation systems, by improving the way their water systems work, um, by improving the way uh, how energy efficient buildings are, um, by helping them reduce their crime levels, uh, and a number of other aspects. You could kind of wrap it together with the theme of livability, I guess. Mm -hmm. Are there any specific problems in Canada that IBM is working on? Uh, most definitely around water and transportation, yes. Um, Canada, like a lot of developed countries, has, for example, a fairly large accumulated backlog of uh, maintenance and uh, renewal, for, for example, in its highways and its um, uh, water systems. Um, we're helping um, a number of agencies figure, figure out ways to work through that, identify what their priorities absolutely have to be to things that they need to uh, replace or repair. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested also, and I think our readers would be, in what the key technology approach is that IBM takes to defining and also to resolving some of these issues. Right, so our approach is based on the notion that there is, that your ability to measure this stuff, your ability to gather data about this stuff is far greater than it ever was. So when you bring that data in and you start to analyze it in different ways and you start to mine it in different ways, um, you make a whole new level of decisions possible. Uh, for example, you can begin to predict that uh, a water main is in danger of bursting before it actually has and therefore repair it. You can start to predict traffic so that you can then reconfigure traffic lights on the fly to divert that traffic. You can get a much better tab on um, what's driving crime levels in a particular area and respond to that. So those are the kinds of things that we do. It's all based on the data, based on the information, based on how you analyze uh, that information. Mm -hmm. Yes, big data is a very hot topic in the industry these days. And one of the questions that seems to come up in a lot of the conversations that I'm party to is, how do you ask the right questions of the data? Because uh, the technology solutions are there. When you're working on some of the Smarter Cities projects, who's responsible for framing the questions? Is it IBM that takes the lead typically, or the customer? Well, ultimately it has to be the customer, um, but the customer is usually employing us for our um, advice and guidance on how they should be um, thinking about asking those questions. Sometimes we do research projects where we are asking the questions as well, um, but that's obviously with a clear view of some kind of customer need uh, in mind as well. Okay. These projects seem massive in scope. I had an introduction to the Grand River Watershed Project in Southern Ontario, and I see that they're executed through relationships with several different kinds of organizations. What new partners does IBM have to work with in Smarter Cities initiatives? And again, who takes the leadership in these relationships? Sure, I mean, that's a great, uh, a great question. Very important to stress, IBM is not a civil engineering company. We're not a hydrological engineering company or a water engineering company. We're, we're information engineers. And what we're about is bringing information engineering to those other disciplines and saying, what can we achieve together uh, that we can't do separately? Um, as for who takes the lead, I guess you'd say that depends. Um, it depends on who the client is, who has a relationship with that client, the nature of the work, uh, and so on. It could be either, it could be us, it could be the engineering company, it could be some uh, equipment or hardware company, for example, a meter vendor. Um, it, it, it will vary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, fair enough. What about challenges in these projects? Are the issues technology related or are they more institutional or is social commitment an issue for you? Sometimes the technology, um, you know, there's, there's something that actually needs to be invented, um, usually by way of some algorithm or um, some method for doing something. More generally, the problems are institutional. Um, most governments anywhere in the world are, tend to be somewhat fragmented. Um, they tend to have their own departmental structures and so forth, and those departments are used to kind of looking at things through their lens. Smarter Cities is all about combining information across different disciplines, getting those disciplines to work together, oftentimes is a bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
in Canada there are um, different departments within government, but there are also different jurisdictions and right. responsibility for different aspects of delivering a service right. to citizens. Um, how are you working to overcome these challenges? Yeah, I mean, it's, you, you describe the problem in Canada. Every country has some flavor of that of, of that issue one way or another. I mean, I live in the United States and the fragmentation there is um, quite extraordinary, mm -hmm. um, for example. Um, how do we work to overcome it? You have to illustrate to people what the uh, benefit is of them working together. You have to listen very carefully to their reservations. Um, it's where politics meets technology technology meets politics if you will mm -hmm. um, and it's actually what makes the job so absorbing you know in terms of um, you're putting information into the political process in some way oftentimes that is of itself a political act mm -hmm. um, so you know you're helping people make better decisions um, you have to demonstrate the value of those decisions so that you know they they then have the incentive to um, to work together mm -hmm. a very interesting process I would imagine so you have to define what the problem is but you also at the same time have to present the resolution and the business value in a way that a politician can uh, justify or quantify what some of the benefits would be. Beginning sometimes with dispensing with the term business value, maybe it's social value or value for their, uh, their, um, you know, their, uh, their voters or the people they represent or, or whatever it is. And that's true, by the way. I mean, I spent a year in, um, uh, sorry, a month in uh, Vietnam, mm -hmm. uh, which is a communist country, but it's the same process. Mm -hmm. You have to demonstrate the political fit and the political achievability mm -hmm. of, of, of what you're recommending. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, good luck in your adventures. Thanks very much for taking the time. Thank I appreciate you very much. it. Thank Bye. you.